Good afternoon, everybody. It's Wednesday, November 23rd, 2022. And this beautiful SA301 from 1980, we've used it for a long time, but it was unfortunately used in an environment that required a more powerful receiver. So the uh, output uh, device is um, probably overheated and, sh and uh, shorted out. So we're going to uh, replace them with these new ones. Okay, that's what they look like. Usually 10 pin devices and two screw holes. And this is thermal paste. And uh, that's what they look like in the rear. So uh, I'm just going to have my eggs and my juice. And then I'm going, and my sausages. And then I'm going to, we're going to take this apart. Basically, the, the screened part in this piece of wood. Uh, there's a few screws in the back that you unscrew, okay? Then these slide out. That's why I love these receivers. There's a there's a groove in here, and these just slide out of the groove. Then we're going to flip the unit over and uh, remove the bottom panel, which is made up of uh, at least 10 or more uh, Phillips screws. Remove that panel because you're going to need to get to the, the soldering pads to unsolder the old output devices. So there's just three screws in the back here. One, two, three. Gonna remove those. Then this slides back. And then this uh, piece of wood in the front here also slides right out. Okay, the screws are out. I have to put the phone down. Hold on. And there's also this uh, plastic support. Goes like that. Okay, then next. Open sesame. It's hard to do this with one hand. Two hands would be easier because you get lopsided. I'll put the phone down a sec and pull this out. Okay, there's the two devices. We're, uh, can you see them down in there? One, two. Now there's two ways you can do this. Uh, normally, I don't take this whole heatsink panel out. Uh, normally, I would unsolder the connections underneath the 10 pins, right? Then I'd uh, unscrew the screws, the two Phillips screws on each uh, output device. There's two. See them? One, two. And you need a little short Phillips screwdriver, basically. And, uh, you know, you can kind of angle them in there and uh, get them through the holes. Put your thermal paste on and uh, go to town. But today, since there's only one, two screws to take the whole heat sink panel upward, I think I'm going to try that for the first time. I'm going to just pull, unsolder the uh, output devices. Um, this device you don't unsolder. He's just going to slip out. He's just held in by a clip. I don't know if you can see that. That transistor there. So he's going to stay in the board. We're not unsoldering him. But these other two devices are coming out. And as, as you can see, there are SDK1049 devices in here because I put larger ones in, higher power ones. Um, today we're going back to the original SDK1039 devices. This is a 40 watt per channel receiver made in the 80s, 1980 to be specific. It's got a great tuner in it too. I did another video on the tuner of this. So let's get started. Gonna loosen these three screws. 
for now. Oh, hard to get a focus on that one. Okay, not going to take them all the way out yet. Alright, so now we have to take off all these Phillips screws to get the back panel off. I usually keep them in their same orientation. Because they're not always all the same screw. So I'm going to put the camera down and take all these screws out. So there's the cover. It's off. And uh, if you look over here, you'll see where the output, well, this output device uh, I soldered in several years ago. So there's one, two, three, four, four. There's actually only six, six, six pins you have to solder on each side. Can you see that? Focus, 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 focus. Right, I guess I got them back. And these are, these are not used, these are one, two, three, four pins. And there's the other side. Now, because this is flipped, this is the left channel, and this is the right channel. But if you flip it around, this would be the right channel, and this would be the left channel. Now, I could uh, bug this out with my meter and find that these are shorted out or damaged. I'm not even going to waste my time and do that because I know they're damaged. Uh, so I'm just going to replace both of them. This little bracket is cracked. I'm just going to leave for now. One day I'll crazy glue that. Because one of the rear panel, the bottom panel screws goes right in there. And it's kind of captured so it can't go anywhere. But one day I'll take that out and uh, you can just crazy glue it. That should work fine for that. So what I'm going to do is heat up all of these points. I have my soldering iron right here warming up. And um, I'm going to use solderwick. The way you use solderwick is you, uh, you place the solderwick in between the solder. Okay. And your iron, and then you hold your iron on it, and you uh, and you'll see the wick, wick up the solder. So don't hold your iron on there too long, because you don't want to lift this copper off the board. So it's just long enough to get these off. You're not going to have any problem on this board lifting copper, because these are pretty substantial traces, and uh, it's a it's a high quality board. Okay, I just wicked the first two. I kind of did them together. Just held held the uh, held the solder wick here, right? Just held it right across the two, and then as the solder wick gets filled, I just started moving it to the right, so you can get some new solder wick in between because this is going to get saturated and won't be able to hold anymore. <clears throat> so the first two are done, perfectly clear holes. So this will come right out. You can see. I'm going to do the rest of them. And then we're going to flip the unit over again. Okay, folks. Instead of me being lazy, I propped up my phone with two screwdriver handles so I could show you how I wick this. This is good. Look at this high-quality video production here. So there you go. Heating it up. You could see it's starting. Then I'm just going to I move the wick to the right. You can see the wick filling with solder and it's done already. It's done. Now these last two I'm just going to go to town with here. Yeah, kind of going to do them both at once since they're very close to each other. Look at that action. Left one's done. I used a generous amount of solder when I put this in, I can see. Okay, so you can see that the pins 
are all no longer solder and you could test them before you pull them out because you don't want to damage the pad when you pull out the device you want to make sure that all these pins are loose before uh, pulling out this device but when you're because we're going to pull these out with the heat sink all right i just did the other side so once again check your pins Make sure they're all loose from the pads. Oh, you see this one? I gotta wick a little more because he's still connected. You don't want to pull that out and damage the pad, so I'm just gonna grab the wick and just loosen him. Okay. Some of these are still soldered too, so I did a bad job. I gotta kind of I'll put the wick on the back of them to get to them. All right, now that the two output devices are completely unsoldered, I can now fully take out this screw, this screw, and this screw, and fully uh, pull this whole heat sink out. It's already a little loose. Okay, everybody. Remember I said I was going to pull the whole heat sink out with the two output ICs uh, attached to the heat sink? We're not going to do that. I just realized that the heat sink is uh, is attached to this board with some uh, plastic rivets. I don't know if you could see that down in there. Put the torch on. So the heat sink is attached to this back board. Now, when I do things, when I replace parts, for some reason that one doesn't have a rivet in that hole there. I don't know why. If you look down, down there. So this is a tat. Like watch here. This is attached to this board. So I, I'm I, when I my approach is to um, disturb as little as possible when you're replacing parts. So so we're gonna shift gears. We're gonna put these screws back in. These three screws. One, two, three. Leave well enough alone there. And all you have to do is get uh, some small Phillips screwdrivers to be able to get these uh, one, two, three, four screws out. Then you're going to pull a chip down and just slide them out. He'll come out. Plenty of room under this heat sink to get these two out. So that's the way we're going to do it. And that's the way I've done it before. That's the way I've replaced these two, as a matter of fact, uh, years ago. Okay. I just was going to try the other method. I guess it works on certain models, but uh, not every model is exactly the same the way it's assembled. All right, so I got my small screwdriver set. And I'm just showing you how I, uh, you know, you just kind of get the screwdriver in there. See? This one's the hardest one because the capacitor is in the way, but you can get between them. Uh, with the screwdriver and the rest are pretty pretty accessible okay I got the left one going here almost out okay I'm gonna put the camera down here This one I was lucky enough, well, I could have just got a thinner screwdriver, but I was able to get in there at an angle right above the capacitors here. To get that one out. Okay, folks, the left two um, screws are out, and because the device is unsoldered, it just uh, kind of pulled away from the wall when I was uh, I was using uh, this needle nose to pull the screws out, 
just to grab them through this little slot here between the heat sink and uh, it just pulled away from the wall so I'm just going to slide it out underneath the heat sink uh, I didn't take these two screws out but those are easy so same thing both sides now about the compound here cleaning you could clean the old one off but if it's nice and supple and still pasty it's probably still good so you can uh, if you feel you, you you can add a little bit to the back of the obviously you're gonna need to add some on that surface that metal surface and then it'll bond with the old or you can uh, clean off the old and just go all new if the old is kind of dried out and you know because if it's dried out it's not going to uh, have good thermal conductivity and you're gonna burn out your devices if you like to play your music loud so uh, there you go all right here's the old device just finagled it out from underneath I suppose if you cut these pins after you desolder them underneath the board it would make it a little bit easier to get this out from on top but it wasn't bad kind of wedge a screwdriver behind it use the vertex method fulcrum method to kind of get it out of there piece of cake Here's the uh, old one. It's not that old, maybe five to seven years old, but we got a lot of use out of this. Incidentally, important fact here. When you first you mount, do okay, you're going to line up the pins in those holes, push the pins through. After you put the heat sink compound on everything, spread it evenly, nicely then you must screw in this part. Make sure it's mounted before you solder the pins underneath. Because if you solder the pins and then these holes do not line up, you're going to have to unsolder all those pins again. And that means applying more heat to the component. And you, you don't want to apply too much heat if, if, you can sp if you don't have to. So anyway, mount the component. Make sure the screws are completely fully tightened down. And then uh, then you flip the unit over and solder. So actually mount both of them. I still got to get this old one out. So mount both of them with the one, two, three, four screws. Make sure all the pins are through all the holes nicely. This is the old one. And, and then you're going to solder them from underneath. It's really a piece of cake. It's, a, it's not hard to do. Take your time. Spread the, um, you want to make sure you spread the thermal compound evenly on this metal because that will take the heat away from the uh, transistors inside of here. Inside of here are, are, are a number of transistors and uh, resistors. It's basically the driver circuit and the uh, output circuit. It's a power amplifier. Now these will these last a very long time, um, but this unit was you know I know this was played at very loud volumes with lots of bass and and that's probably what fried the old ones. Um, but under normal use, they'll last the they'll last for decades. Okay, I I'm going to leave the old compound on now. I know you're like, ah, you're being lazy, but no, I'm not, because look, I just stuck my finger in here. It's nice and soft. It's still, it's still good. And I know I just did this job about maybe five to seven years ago. So this isn't an old dried out stuff that's not going to be thermally conductive. So, but if you had to remove it, use a, a Q-tip and some alcohol, maybe a brush, and uh, and then you, it'll come off. It, it's not on there uh, solidly. It, it'll just wipe off. Okay, the right one was easy to get out. The screws are a little bit easier to get to than this side. Um, try to remember the angle that you pull these things out because that's probably going to be the same approach you're going to use to get them back in, except in the reverse direction. Um, because you're going to have to angle it in. It gets a little messy, so uh, 
So you're going to apply the heating, this heat sink compound to this. You might get a little bit on the heat sink on these fins that are sticking out. Don't worry about it. It's fine. And just get it, uh, make sure, make sure your pins are straight so they go right in the holes. You could, you could probably angle them back a little bit. I'll show you. So they kind of approach the hole nicely and go right in so uh, you're not fighting with it. You could bend the, all the 10 pins downward a little bit. I'll show you. Okay, so here's the new device. I didn't put the heat sink on yet, compound on it yet. But it's going to go there. So you're going to have to angle this down, okay? You're going to have to go like that. You're going to have this is the kind of motion. But instead of fighting with the holes, what you do is you want to bend these pins forward. And to do that, just lay the device down. And you gently press, okay, I didn't do it enough, try it again, um, that's not a good surface, okay, let me use my tool, toolbox here to show you how to do this, we do this all the time at work. So you, you put the device here with all the pins down. So you bend them all together. Okay. And they kind of coming forward. Hard to see, but they are getting angled forward. Just a little bit. There you go. Slight angle forward. You'll be surprised how much that will help you get these in those ten holes down there. So I'm going. I'm going to get a Q-tip and just put the heat sink compound on here. I'll show you what it looks like when I'm done. Okay, the heat sinks on there. Spread it kind of evenly. You're going to squeeze it down when you tighten these screws. Don't over tighten them, but they should be snug. You might see the heat sink uh, compound squeeze out. That's okay. The thermal, con con thermal compound may squeeze out the edges. That's okay. Now, even though I took the left one out first, I'm, gonna, I'm going to put the right side one in first because that one is it came out easier. So I'm going to... Uh, just go to school on the right one, then I'll be better at doing the more challenging left one. But they're both not bad, but this one's just a little bit easier because there's more room. So see that big ceramic resistor down there? The Matsushita symbol on it there? I'm, I'm just going to lay this, just going to route this underneath the heat sink and lay it on that resistor so it'll be kind of with heat sink up then just going to push it back and angle it down into the holes can't show you that because i only have two hands so actually i can show it to you there it is laying down pins ready to go in the holes also use a you definitely need a needle nose to get your screws and never squeeze these things too hard because they're made of ceramic sometimes and they could crack but to maneuver it around, it's good to have a pair of needle nose. So this thing's ready. All the pins are ready to go down into the 10 holes. Okay, that was pretty easy. I just actually stood up with my eyes above the unit facing down like this. So I could see the pins from behind the chip. And uh, once you get the pin one lined up, they're all going to line up. So that was pretty easy. They're all in the holes. See, you could see. No guesswork here, folks. Now you're going to put in the two screws and drive this baby home to its, uh, it's going to be here for decades, hopefully. Making beautiful music. So th those of you who are inexperienced just getting into this hobby, um, take your time. You will be successful. Um... 99% of the things that you do just take your time now what you want want to do is get the easier screw in first But don't tighten it. That's obviously this one here 
So I'm going to get that one in, get it started, and then I'll do this one. Okay, this one is ready to be put in. I used the needle nose to pick up the screw from the from its threaded part near the head and then push it, pick it up and then push it into the hole like that, this motion like that. And now it's ready to be screwed in. It's in as much as possible, which gives you screwdriver room because there's not a lot. But it gives you screwdriver room by pushing that screw in as much as it can go before you start using the screwdriver to screw it in. Also, also, folks, you can also use a, a flathead, small flathead screwdriver, to get a Phillips head screw started. So don't feel that you can't use a flathead. You can, because I'm going to use the smaller flathead screwdriver just to get that one started. Okay, it's going in little by little. Okay, I just uh, alternated tighten the screws. You know, you go a little bit left, a little bit right, a little bit left, a little bit right. Snug them down. And if you look down here, you could see them popping through the big heat sink there. And uh, that one too is a little hard to see, but it's there. Behind the harness, this black harness, but oh, that's hard to see, but there it is. Okay, so that one's in, and uh, let's just lift it up a sec. Oh, where are you? And uh, here are the uh, pins coming through. Make sure they're all there. They're all there, ready to be soldered. But I'm not going to solder yet because I'm going to get the other one done. I have to get this one in and mounted. Then I'm going to solder all the pins together. Not together, as at one at the same time. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing for the left side now, exactly like the right. So I'm not going to show it to you. It's the same. The only thing with this side is you have this... Uh, cable in the way but you're gonna just go over that cable and get it in there be very careful this is the tuning section of the amp you don't want to touch anything in here this this tuner is amazing in this thing so you do not want to touch anything or break anything so just take your time don't turn anything uh, because you'll screw up your tuner and then then you'll just uh, be left with an amplifier instead of a receiver Okay, I'm going to do this side now, and then the next clip will be uh, the flipping it over and soldering. Okay, the left one is in, ready to be screwed in. I use the combination of a tiny screwdriver and these little needle nose to uh, just to guide it in there. Dropped right in the holes nicely. Beautiful. So here's a little trick. Look how I have to hold this screw to get it through this little crack here, like that, to get it started inside the hole. But you do what you have to do. You'll figure out a way. Okay, so this one is in. I'm going to put this one in first and then that one in second because this one's the easier one to get to. All right. Left screw is started. Right screw I just put in the hole. Now I'm going to start screwing that in with a little tiny screwdriver. Moving right along. Okay, I know I said the next clip was gonna, going to be the soldering part. But um, everything's in. I just wanted to show you. Make sure all your four screws, one, two, three, four, are tight, snug. So we're done up here. The hard part of this project is done. And incidentally, there's always an instant, incidentally um, portion to my videos. Incidentally, buy quality parts. I mean, you don't want to have to be uh, doing this job again. 
Not that it's a hard job, but you know, you may not want to do it twice in a week. So these I got from a reputable seller online mm -hmm. and they should be good, but even I don't know because I, I keep reading that these are becoming harder and harder to find. So uh, hope you can find them if you're fixing one of these little techniques receivers and uh, so you can keep them going, going for uh, years to come. Okay, I'm going to put the top back on with the uh, three screws. You know, so you're basically going to slide in the wooden part, then the screen part, and then put in these three screws. Incidentally, um, check your fuses. When the old components failed on this receiver, these fuses did not operate, okay? And that's not uncommon. These fuses will not prevent these output devices from failing. The fuses are typically there to prevent damage to your speakers when this thing shorts out. This thing shorts out because it overheats and something blows in it and a short circuit is created. Then you could bring DC from the power supply inside here to your speakers and damage it. And that's pretty much what these are for. They're, they're not going to protect these uh, uh, output devices from failing. And here's a uh, perfect example of that. Okay, top's on. Looking nice. It would look nice if I was able to focus. There you go. And uh gonna just solder the bottom and put the bottom cover on it and test. Okay, everybody. I flipped the unit over. Now we're just going to solder. Okay, sorry about that. I had the phone balanced and it fell. So the left side's done, the right side's done. I also cleaned everything with isopropyl alcohol and, and a couple of Q-tips here. Uh, I noticed on one pad, I, it's not a big deal, but you could see that I didn't fully fill the hole with solder. Right there. Not a big deal, the other side is fully soldered, but you want to uh, just fix that, so I'm going to fix that. Okay, that's all fixed now. Everything's looking good. You want to make it look like it did when it came out of the Techniques factory back in 1980. Or better, if you can. Nothing wrong with making an improvement. So I'm going to put the back on. I mean, I'm going to put the bottom on, this bottom cover here that's sitting over there. And I got my small little poke RM101s ready just to test it. So it should be fun. And I put the wrong screws in over here. I'll show you. See, you thought I was perfect. Even I make mistakes. These don't go there. The nice decorative black ones go there that's class for you not that anyone's ever going to see them it's in the back of the unit but that's class they could have used the same screws they use nice black ones well i guess they just use the same ones that maybe the same ones they used on the whole back panel here okay bye okay that's all done looks good Okay, all uh, put in all 12 uh, bottom cover screws. They're all on. 
but don't tighten them until you get them all in and threaded otherwise you may have some problems so now that they're all in and threaded and there's 12 of them now uh, you can uh, uh, torque them down okay I just hooked up a clip lead as an antenna over here just a wire basically and I'm hooking up a pair of small little poke speakers to test this I always love these techniques uh, speaker connectors you strip your wire you twist it you know you want the wire to be nice and uh, you don't want any like stray strands let me show you okay these uh, where is it oh okay so I gotta twist these a little bit tighter so you strip them you stick them in here and then you turn these. See, right now they're at like the 10 o'clock position. These are open. These are these are ready to accept the wire. They're at the 10 o'clock position. Then um, you push the wire all the way in till it stops. Then you turn this from 10 o'clock position all the way to 3 o'clock. These are locked. And when they're locked, you tug on the wire, they're not coming out. So these are very nice uh, connectors. Never had a problem with these. Okay, now the only thing I, I should have shown, which I didn't do yet, is anytime you change these uh, output devices, you should check your uh, your DC offset and your your D, your DC bias, uh, so that you have to find the service manual to your receiver. This is an SA three hundred one, and um, basically uh, you need to set the uh, quiescent current through your output devices. Usually, it's like whatever thirty milliamps or whatever it is. Every 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 unit's different, and you want to make sure there's no a DC on your speakers. So that's the two different uh, measurements. You, for the DC on the speakers, you, you stick your ohm meter, I'm sorry, your voltmeter into your speaker outputs. No signal, everything off. And then uh, there's potentiometers inside the unit that you're going to turn with a tiny screwdriver. And uh, you want... I guess less than three millivolts on the speaker terminals with no signal. I, I don't know what the spec is for this, but so that's your DC balance or your DC uh, offset. So you want to uh, adjust the output devices so that no DC gets to your speakers. So that's called uh, your DC offset adjustment. And you do that for the left channel, left channel and the right channel. Your DC bias is the current the standby current running through your output devices at all times. It's usually around 20 milliamps or 30 milliamps. And uh, there's a procedure for that too in the service manual. But we're just going to do a quick test now. Uh, I won't leave it running for too long. But um, just to just to see if the uh, just to see if the output devices were in fact the problem of why this thing stopped working. So here goes. All right, volume down. Plugged in? Yes, okay. First on the line cuts the budget, too. And just like this line cut, tied simply. All right, we got both there. channels working. Table it up. Tied simply. Tough on stains. Left channel. Easy on your wallet. Dad, I don't feel good. <coughs> I'll grab Left the channel. Dick's Dick Kids, honey. Isn't day cool just for parents? Actually, Dick's right Dick channel. Dick's Dick Kids, honey, is just for kids. So, uh, it's working pretty good. Got the meter going here. Oh, I gotta get a better, better antenna here. So she's working. Feels better than giving. This has a great tuner. I gotta clean that volume pot. Hear that? For free when you download our free. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching this video. So she's uh, sounding pretty good. Where is the 
starting prep. Right Nobody's now. in the house, so I can blast this right now. Okay. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Okay, just really quick, I just checked the service manual, and I couldn't find a, a DC bias uh, specification uh, on this. Maybe it's because it uses an IC for the output stage, I'm not sure, but, but I'm just checking for a DC coming uh, out on the speaker outputs. So I'm doing the left channel now, make sure that, so I, I get uh, around 17 millivolts. I'd like to see that somewhere close to zero. So there might be an adjustment for that in here, but I couldn't find it in the service manual. So this is the left channel. Let's see what the right channel is looking like. Okay, we're in the right channel. Speaker outputs now. This is millivolts. Oh, a little bit less on the right channel. Either way, you know, we're pretty good. We're safe. You know, we're not going to fry any speakers with less than 20 millivolts of DC on the outputs. But there's got to be an adjustment in these. I just, I, right now, I just can't find it in the service manual, and I apologize for that. It's got to be online somewhere. Maybe I just looked at the wrong area. But I couldn't find a DC bias or a uh, DC offset uh, measurement. I, I found the, uh, you know, to align the FM, there's a lot of information to align the FM tuner, but I just want to make sure the amp is sound and, you know, going to have longevity after doing this uh, replacement. But I feel good that the DC offset is uh, pretty good. It's uh, very low. Zero is what you want. So... When I figure out how to do it, I'll set I'll set both channels for zero DC volts on the outputs. All right, everyone, thank you for watching this video. Um, so that's how you change those output devices. There is a procedure in the service manual too how to change them. I did it my way. So uh, whatever you're comfortable with, as long as the outcome is the same, how you achieve that outcome is up to you. Everybody has a different way of doing things. So here are the old ones. They're shot. So that was it. That is what was wrong with this unit. So before I put this back in the room that it was being used in, I'm just going to squirt some uh, deoxid into this uh, potentiometer because it's a little scratchy. The rest of the switches are okay. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye. See you next time.